Hey guys, it's Michelle here and one of the things I love to do is peruse the resale market for bags that have already been loved, specifically designer bags that have already been loved and used sitting in someone's closet and ready to make a new home. So if you've been watching me, you know that I talk all about Louis Vuitton. But I love to shop and I love to shop for vintage pieces, which does make it very dangerous as a YouTuber. In this video, I found a few pieces that I thought were worth it to take a look at in the pre-love market for different reasons. The first reason is that everything 90s and early 2000s is circling back again and showing up in today's market. For that reason, I saw some great retro pieces in wonderful condition at great prices that I think somebody should jump on. So please jump on it so that I don't have to buy all these pre-love Louis Vuittons. I am super excited about the 90s and early 2000s coming back because that was when I really started my career, my profession, started to make my own money and really started to shop for myself and appreciate the fashions out there. Now, early 2000s was the era of Marc Jacobs for Louis Vuitton. And honestly, I don't see anything like that in the market at all. You know that 90s and 2000s style, it's a little bit bold in your face, logo, chunky heels, um, big buckles, studs, all that stuff. So the first bag on my list, it's called the Iconoclast. And this particular bag was in collaboration with the shoe company Louboutin. Don't get it confused people, Louboutin, Louis Vuitton. It is not the same brand. You would be surprised how many people think this is actually the same brand. So Louboutin, the red bottom shoes, collaborated with Vuitton on the Iconoclast so you have the studs that you see often on the Louboutin and turn the bag around and there is the red backed bag. I love the little detail of the bow on the side. One thing I do remember about this particular bag when I worked for Louis, somebody did bring it in for some kind of repair and it couldn't be done. I believe it was the glazing, but I don't know for sure. So you can see that this bag is very special. You risk uh, the service center not having the same parts to be able to service this bag, which is why I suggest when you are buying a special limited edition piece such as this, and it is pretty pricey at um, $4,395, make sure it's in as best condition as possible. Why we love this bag, again, the studs, the red detail, also held by Mariah Carey and Angelina Jolie. The next piece is the Sharon Stone Vanity 3 from 2001. This is an excellent travel piece and one that you don't see very often. So in this picture, it looks too boxy to carry as an everyday type of bag. It's definitely a travel piece and it's definitely unique. So let's look at the inside. Look at this beautiful red lining. And do you see this leather belt that's going across here? That part is meant to carry toiletries. So that is where you're going to put your skincare bottles, your shampoo bottles. So they stay secure along the side of the bag. That's what makes this a travel piece. I think it's a very unique and a beautiful travel piece. So let me remind you that Louis Vuitton is actually a travel company and was known for their travel pieces before the invention of the Speedy. Next on the list, this is the Eden Neo Argent from 2010. This bag has a very 2000s retro feel. I know not everyone's going to agree with me on this, but there are so many elements and details of this bag that I like. First of all, it has the metallic coating that makes it a little different than your typical canvas. It has handles that are reminiscent of the Speedy. Also has a crossbody strap that I like for convenience. And I do like the drawstring that makes it reminiscent of the Noé. All these details put together make it very Vuitton. But let's look at the details, the strips of a cheddar at the bottom with the little feet and the tiny little lock that's an unexpected surprise here in the corner. 
The lock is also a very signature for Vuitton. I think the size and the shape and the styling of this bag makes it a great everyday bag. This to me has all those details and style from the Marc Jacobs era that he was known for. It's luxury but streetwear inspired and these little details I personally feel have been lacking in the current collection and, and the collection of past years since Marc Jacobs has left the brand. Another favorite from the Marc Jacobs era is the perforated Speedy from 2008. I am a shopaholic, I'm a fashion fanatic, I have a regular Speedy, but the reason I pick these bags is because they are a little bit different from the typical brown and mustard canvas or the damier that you see everybody carrying. So why not carry something different, unique, but it's still Vuitton and branded, just a little bit different. I also picked these bags because the price is great. The condition of the bags look to be in very good condition. And personally to me, it just makes sense because the current collection costs almost three times as much as these pre-loved bags. Even on the resale market, you can pay a lot of money for the bags that are current. They are still Vuitton and something that really Fashion always cycles, so you could wear these pieces for years to come. Why not buy a bag in a great condition that someone doesn't want? By the way, before I forget, all of these bags that I'm talking about will be linked in the description, so you can check that out after the video. More items on the list. If you can handle white, there is the Sarah Multicolor Wallet, and this one is only $450. The current Sarah goes for 720. This is from the Murakami collection. Because the colored print is printed on the outside of the canvas, you do risk rubbing the print off of this. So it has some types, some shows of wear, but the inside looks pink and pristine. It looks very good for an old wallet. Now, please know, the Sarah is very popular. Your phone does fit in there, but please don't put your phone in there. It is not a clutch. It is not meant to fit your phone. Buy a clutch or buy a phone case for that because putting your phone in there, it's gonna stretch out the seams, you guys. Do not do that. Alrighty, another bag that I've mentioned in the past, but probably not enough, is the Kabas Tote. There are two versions I see here. One is very 2000s retro transparent PVC with the studs, very 2000s, very bold, a little gaudy in your face. All of the brands are coming back with these transparent totes, so don't sleep on it. The cost of this one is 995. What I really like about these transparent totes is this is the perfect place to drop in your Vuitton cosmetics case or your pochette accessoire or your mini pochette so that it sees through, it shows through and it's a way to use your little pouches and still somewhat show them off, show off that LV logo. And lastly, the traditional kibosh looks like this. Uh, there are so many of the kibosh available, available right now in both the piano and the mezzo. So those are just fancy words for the piano is the smaller one and the mezzo is medium. This was Angelina Jolie's favorite bag when she was an ambassador for the brand. You can see her carrying this bag a lot in her pictures when she still was with Brad Pitt. This is the bag that she carried. What I like about the kibosh, this is your tote that has a zipper. Isn't it a common complaint that the Neverfull does not have a zipper and the Neverfull is also too common. So yes, the kibosh is an older style, but like I said, everything from that era is coming back and you can get this kibosh for a very decent price. They're in very good condition and mainly under a thousand dollars. So I think that's a great reason to jump on this type of bag. I hope I've given you some helpful information and even if you're new to the brand, these are great pieces to have, especially if you're just going for that Vuitton look and the logo, if you've seen my other videos and all the other videos on YouTube, you know how expensive Vuitton is getting. And quite honestly, I do agree that the quality of the newer bags isn't up to par with the prices that they are charging, but I absolutely love the quality of the vintage pieces that I own, so I have confidence in buying pre-loved, like I said, inspect the pictures, make sure it's in the condition that you want. 
There are some pieces that can be still replaced and serviced in the Vuitton Center as long as it is an authentic Vuitton. If you're to this portion of the video, guys, thank you so much for watching. I am always combing the pre-love market. If Even if you are new to the brand, there is nothing wrong with owning a pre-loved Vuitton. There is so much rich heritage in this brand. And personally, I do believe some of the retro pieces are better quality, better material, better carefulness of stitching and glazing. Some of the newer pieces, especially if you were to buy brand new today, just does not justify the price, not just by me, but everyone else on YouTube tends to agree with this. So even if you are buying a vintage piece or a pre-love piece, still congratulate yourself and celebrate if you are purchasing your first Vuitton. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. My name's Michelle. See you soon. Bye.